Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to The Old Hunters, the expansion DLC for Bloodborne. I'm so ready for this. I spent all of last night playing a new character from beginning to end so I could have a character on new game, kitted out, ready for the DLC to drop. Can't wait. Let's pick this item up, our key item for the DLC. The Eye of a Blood Drunk Hunter beckons hunters to the hunter's nightmare. A deformed creature will whisk you away outside of Erden Chapel telling you what it is, what it does, where you use it. So this item spawns in the Hunter's Dream, I believe, after you start the night phase of the game after beating Vicar Amelia. And it gets you access to the starting area for the DLC, the Eye of a Blood Drunk Hunter. Its pupil is collapsed and turned to mush, indicating the onset of the Scourge of Beasts. A hunter who goes drunk with blood is said to be taken by the Nightmare, destined to wander forever. Engaged in an endless hunt, it is a fate that no hunter can escape. Again, with the eye motif, also take note of the idea of being drunk with blood that shows up somewhere else. Uh, oh, I want to check this out real quick. The Old Hunter's Bell, uh, one of the resonating bells that cross the gaps between worlds. This bell is cracked and stained with bl uh, the blood of beasts. A human must expend insight to ring the bell. The Old Hunters, who have long passed from their dream, but I cannot forget the feeling of the hunt, rely upon messengers to relay their thoughts. Ring the bell at their side. And they're certain to give a listen, for the night of the hunt is long and unchanging. Um, you get this now at the beginning of the game, ever since the pre-DLC patch. It's to summon uh, new NPC hunters. So, this is why I said to pay attention to the uh, the Blood Drunk theme of uh, that Eye of the Blood Drunk Hunter. Because the pungent blood cocktail, which you get like way, way early in the base game, also alluded to the blood of the beasts that the hunters hunt having some kind of intoxicating effect and that may be the source of the madness itself that it's referring to it's alcoholic like in nature so before we even jump into the DLC before we even start that we have access to it we're not doing that just yet though because we're going to check out some of the stuff that was recently added in uh, the pre-DLC patch, patch 1.07, which came out like a day or two ago, and added a lot of stuff. Like, uh, like that, like that for one. <laughs> I haven't seen him use that before. Uh, so it added a new NPC with his own quest line, it added some new armor, a new covenant, that new spell that you just saw. Uh, the, the hunter tool. A lot of new NPCs you could summon for boss fights using that uh, old hunter's bell. And it all starts here in the Forbidden Woods. Like, you've got this new NPC hunter here who I'm assuming spawns later in the game, maybe after you beat Rom. Because he wasn't here when I went through this area to get to the Shadows of Yarnum. And when you beat him, you get Madara's Whistle, which is a new hunter tool or spell. Easier for me to call it a spell. Uh, so, Whistle of the Madara's Twins, Denizens of the Forbid- Hmm? Come on, now. Let's try that again. So, Whistle of the Madara's Twins, Denizens of the Forbidden Woods, the twins grew up alongside a poisonous snake and developed a silent and human kinship. The poisonous snake grew uncontrollably, raised on a healthy diet of beast entrails. Even after their deaths, it said- to respond to the call of the twin's whistle from within the nightmare. Maybe this is the snake that the Shadows of Yarnum summon. Uh, you can summon it yourself using the Madaris whistle. It uh, spawns right where you call it, gobbles up anything underneath it, including you. It can hurt you. Very, very cool. Now we get to meet Valter, head of the League, which is Bloodborne's equivalent to the Sun Bros. A covenant for jolly cooperation. Ah, a new face, are you? And an accomplished hunter, you would appear. <laughs> I am Volta, master of the League. Members of the League cleanse the streets of all the filth that spread about during the hunt. Like any half-decent hunter ought to, you know? Haven't you seen enough of these wretched beasts, freakish slugs and mad doctors? Sentence these fiends to death, with the help of your League confederates. What do you say? Why not join the League? Yes, 
as a hunter well should. Commit this to heart. Our own Carol Rune, symbol of the League. The night brims with defiled scum and is permeated by their rotten stench. Just think, now you're all set to hunt and kill to your heart's content. Hunt in cooperation with your fellows, your League Confederates. <laughs> Now, there is one thing you must know. By the oath of the League, those who bear its rune will see vermin. Vermin writhe deep within all filth and are the root of man's impurity. All vermin are to be crushed. The League exists to expunge all vermin, ridding us of any trace of human corruption. And so, until we are rid of all vermin, you must continue to hunt and kill. This bloody fate is ours alone. Do not expect the world to grasp our work. But remember, the Confederates will always have my blessing. And each other. Always. The League exists to expunge all vermin, ridding us of any trace of human corruption. And so, until we are rid of all vermin, you must continue to hunt and kill. This bloody f do not an Yeah, bucket-headed NPC heading up, uh, faction center around jelly cooperation. It's the Sun Bros. He's kind of a cheap knockoff Solaire. And the vermin he refers to are centipede-like creatures discovered on successful hunts by League hunters. Vermin found hidden within filth are only seen by League confederates and are the root of man's impurity. The League has assumed the task of finding and crushing all vermin. Perhaps there's some mercy in the madness. Those who wish to see the vermin can, and those who choose to are provided with boundless purpose. Those centipedes, oddly familiar to the ones in Bergenworth. Uh, anyway, I need to gather up some more vermin to crush so that we can progress this a little bit. So I'm going to go do some jolly cooperation and we'll be back in a moment. We're back, we've crushed a vermin, so we should get some new dialogue. Ah, very good. You've crushed some vermin. <laughs> I'm the master of the league, I can see it in your eyes. I'm pleased. This makes you a true fellow of the League. A confederate. Now, take this stuff. A symbol of our oath. Of our blood-drenched fate. You'll be welcomed as a true in short time. Now the mission takes hold of one's... Hello, confederate. You've crushed vermin time and time again. You've seen the filth that varnishes the world of man. Yet, you are unbroken. You've the eyes of a hunter. You have blessed the League with your presence. This was my last, most pressing task. <laughs> my confederate, promise me you'll crush all vermin to rid us of our impurities for the sake of our fellows. Oh, blood-stained hunters of the League. My confederate for this. Hmm. You should be doing one more thing. Yeah, no, I might need to zone out and back in. I'm gonna go back to the Hunter's Dream and come back here, because I crushed five vermin, which should be the trigger for the next part of this quest. Uh, we'll be right back again. Alright, what I want to see is him gone, good. Because that means he's moved on to his next location, we've progressed his quest, which we'll be finishing out sometime in the future. And he leaves behind his helmet, the Master's Iron Helm, which resembles an upside-down bucket. A single hole allows one to peek out with a single eye, which is probably all its original owner had. The Iron Helm is passed down among Masters of the League. Valter had, in fact, lost the ability to see vermin long ago. Uh, someone on the 
Uh, Bloodborne Ra Ah, it looks pretty cool. Again, very Solaris, kind of like a running gag at this point. Uh, someone on the Bloodborne Reddit pointed out that this bucket helmet looks almost identical to the icon for the old Hunter's Bell. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same, except with the, uh, the top part that you would hold the ring in. So, perhaps some kind of connection there. And we also picked up the League Staff. The League Staff is the sign of a confederate. Uh, a directory within the hilt lists the names of fellow confederates. Members of the League brandish the staff to indicate themselves to fellow members of the League. There shall be no sympathy for those engaged in the bloody mission of the League. No matter that... No matter that an oath must be taken to uphold the illusion. There we go. So when you use it, this pulls up a leaderboard. Which is a leaderboard for uh, the Covenant, for the League. Much like the Vile Blood Registry. Uh, it's a little bit buggy at the moment. Like, as you can see there, it indicated that I only crushed one vermin, even though you need to crush five to get the helmet and to get Volter to move on to his next location. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna head back to the Hunter's Dream and get ready to actually enter the DLC now that we've kind of spent some time going over things they added in uh, the pre-DLC patch. Volter, there... At first glance, it doesn't seem like there's too much going on, but that item description and the way he talks indicates that the uh, man in the, the Cyclopean bucket helm may not be all there. Uh, yeah, I don't want impurity on because it does me no good. All it does is give me extra HP while in co-op. Uh, a Kirill rune that, that transcribes inhuman sounds. This rune discovered inside the Forbidden Beast Eater came to symbolize impurity in the Oath of the League. Confederates of the League cooperate with hunters from other worlds and hunt to discover vermin. Vermin writhe within filth and are the root of man's impurity. Crush all vermin without hesitation. Yeah, and his, his single-minded, obsessive, fanatical zeal is uh, another aspect they play with for his character. And here is uh, the League gesture. A, a questionable salute with the cane. Uh, so now that we've gotten all that out of the way, we're going to warp to the Cathedral Ward and spawn inside of Erden Chapel. Because remember, the, the key item that brings us to the starting area of the DLC mentioned that a great bi uh, a great beast outside of Erden Chapel would come and whisk us away. So we know of Erden Chapel, and we know of a beast outside of it. So we're going to see what that's all about. And boy, I hope this is not a super long loading screen. It might be! I'm so not used to leaving loading screens in, but I've already talked through so much of it. There won't be many loading screens from here on out in the, uh, the Old Hunters playthrough, but damn. Uh, if there has to be a lot of warping around, they're mostly gonna get cut, but... Got a lot to say so far, so we remember our good old friend the Amygdala hanging on to the side of Erden Chapel. Used to be that he would just grab you if you stuck around too long to grab the item that used to be there. But now... Cursed Daphines, their children too. And their children forever true. But now, not only does he grab you and hurt you with a frenzy, he transports you, much like the other uh, amygdala that transports you to the lecture hall. This one, now that you have the uh, eyeball of a uh, blood drunk hunter, transports you to the hunter's nightmare. Which looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? This is just Erden Chapel, right? Right? Uh, no way to go back to the Tomb of Erden, where we fought uh, Father Gascoigne, and no exit to the left. We still do have the door to the right, though, but this time it says it doesn't open from this side. 
which is a different message from in the base game when it's still locked. And now we truly see what's going on here in the Hunter's Nightmare. Fucking look at that shit! Oh, uh, the old Hunter's has like the most beautiful but still haunting skyline in the whole game. Like, what is going on with the the moon? I guess looks more like a sun, but what is happening with it? Ah, uh, so let's observe. So, some of the enemies are adversarial to each other. That dude's a badass, and he has the coolest weapon! It's a super heavy whip sword. Oh my god, I love this weapon. The hunter ain't too shabby either. He's... Oh, you know what the problem with parrying that is? It's so slow! that you fire way too early. Um, it's also got absurd reach. It's very, very strong. It knocks you down, and it hits at weird angles. Uh, and he is not unique. I thought the first time I fought him that he was a unique, like, a, a unique NPC hunter. No, he is the standard old hunter's enemy. He's the cannon fodder. This is what constitutes cannon fodder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're finally in there. Oh, I can't contain the excitement anymore. Uh, and we get the old hunter's cap. We're going to be collecting this set uh, pretty quickly. Old hunter's cap with a wide brim that hides the sharp gaze. In the old days, when hunters were ten a penny, Love that phrase. This was a part of the standard garb. Yeah, it's pretty neat looking. I really like that wide brimmed hat, I like the mask cover on the face. It's pretty nifty. Yeah, so those hunters. They're not just hunters, they're previews. They're a taste of things to come and all the awesome weapons you get. Like that thing, that's one of the first weapons you get in the DLC the Beast Cutter. And it is everything I want. It's a whip sword. It's the coolest shit ever. It's Renji's sword from Bleach. Faintly hear the sound of crying in the background, too. And look at what we have here. That's, uh, these are the enemies that... The hunter before was killing. These are the uh, the beasts from Old Yarnum, just splayed out dead here in what is clearly not Old Yarnum, but a facsimile of New Yarnum, the Cathedral Ward, in fact. Uh, also, this is a new dog model, inexplicably, or new dog skin, maybe. Might not just be a completely new model with the same animation rigging, it just might be a, a different skin. But yeah, they look like the, uh, the, uh, the Resident Evil Doberman dogs. Alright. These guys are attacking. They're still aggressive. We got hunters coming in from the other side to clean up. Uh, some of these beasts, though... They are not aggressive. In fact, they cower from you. Which makes a lot of sense. You have the uh, citizens turned bestial who fight back, and then you have the ones freshly transformed who are just cowering because they are actively being hunted. We've, in a way, we've been tra uh, transported back in time. Remember, they, the nightmare, they just hunt eternally. I'm super happy I'm able to use that distraction of the hunt to uh, backstab. I wonder if I'll be able to get him to... Uh, the whip ones I find are like the most dangerous. There we go. They get so caught up in the hunt that they don't even notice you. Unless you let them clear all of the beasts out. Like you're literally watching the past here. 
the hunters on the hunt in, in the newer part of Yarnum. These beasts were everywhere. But now in in pre fuck, I forgot that trap is there. Hold on. I'll point that out a little bit clearer. Clearer? Clearer. A little black pressure plate that triggers a turret. You gotta watch out for those. Um. Yeah, they were... I've become a big fan of just shooting the dogs as soon as I see them. Like, why even let the problem start? Um... The, the beasts that you see commonly in Old Yarnum, they were everywhere. They were just the standard beasts that everyone turned into, or the start of the transformation, like phase one. But now they only exist because you see what happened to them. You see the, the origins of the hunt, and uh, New Yarnum being cleared out, or modern Yarnum being cleared out. The only reason that those kinds of beasts are still in old Yarnum is because they're under the protection of Jura. And maybe some of the other powder kegs. So, this is the beast cutter. This thick iron cleaver slices through the toughest of beast hides and when transformed the blade splits into sections allowing one to lash it in the fashion of a heavy whip. This crude weapon reflects, uh, relies on brute force and is regrettably inelegant, suggesting that the hunts of the earliest hunters made for horrific affairs painted in sanguine reds and blacks. Yeah, you know I'm equipping this. I almost want to go back to uh, the hunter's dream right now and just dump upgrade materials into it. Is this... I'm getting some use out of this. I love whips, and I love swords, and this is a heavy-ass sword whip. Oh my god, look at the reach on that jump attack. Uh, no charged R2 on this, and no uh, L2 either. So you keep the gun out even when it's transformed. Uh, very, very slow, but... F force of, uh, to be reckoned with, that thing is. So we're going through this warped, upended cathedral ward right now, and uh, if you're worried that this is just kind of be, going to be a pallet swap of the cathedral ward with a couple things shifting around, uh, you'll see very quickly that this is going into some unique, distinct directions from uh, the base game. But for now, you get to just enjoy how they pervert something you're familiar with. Uh, this guy is no slouch. How did that not parry him? Oh, shit. He's got, like, a permanent old hunter's bone buff on his, uh, his dashes. I've played a good chunk of this so far, and, uh, it is stellar. I dare say that the old hunters might be better than the base game. If not for the fact that the base game is obviously much longer, but it, it this is denser with stuff. Uh, and if you want to make that comparison to Artorias of the Abyss, I think the Old Hunters eclipses it. Like, the further you go in, the more apparent it gets. It starts off, and you get the impression of, ah, oh, they're just gonna recycle stuff and, uh, enemies and blah. No. Again, we might not get to it in the in this episode, but once it opens up, holy shit. Uh, yeah. We hear that thing taking out all the enemies once the doors open to the, uh, Grand Cathedral. It's fine, we're gonna let him be for a minute. In fact, we're gonna, uh, just play... Birdwatcher here. We're gonna play. Oh, he's coming. Uh, isn't he? Fuck. So, ah, uh, this guy. This guy looks like a partier. Mmm. Oh! What? I swear to God, I've never seen that before. Okay, we're gonna try to fight him. 
We are going to try, at least. Uh, I fought this guy very briefly on my other character and learned that it's a bad idea. He was just doing a belt stat there. Like a Cthulhu... S Velstat impression. Holy shit! Okay, once he gets to that second phase, he's just like the uh, the kidnappers. I bet he's a motherfucker if you don't kill him while he's doing that long power up cycle. But wow, holy shit! That is already an amazing enemy design. <laughs> it's an executioner with this. Thulu face. Um, trying to see if the balconies in the uh, Grand Cathedral, in the Upper Cathedral, are still there. It's hard to tell if they're actually ju- okay, they are. Yeah, it's still there. Uh, and what we have there, on the altar, where Lawrence's skull should be, is a giant burning cleric beast. So, does that mean that's Lawrence? And it's funny, because when you fight Vicar Amelia right here in this arena, her theme is uh, the same as the Cleric Beast. Or does that mean that Lawrence was the Cleric? No, that doesn't make sense, because the Cleric Beast had a head. Uh, where are you? There he is. Uh, eye Pendant. An Eye Pendant which unlocks the Surgery Altar. There are two cathedrals in the Hunter's Dream. One lies past the River of Blood, and another contains the private research hall of the Healing Church. Only chosen members of the Healing Church or their lamentable patients can enter the research hall using this eye. Grant eyes to the surgery altar skull! Ah, oh, Cossum, grant us eyes. So that we may be free of this beastly ignorance. Yeah, I, I'm still a really big fan of the theory that the, uh, blood, the headless bloodletting beast in the Chalice Dungeons is Lawrence. Because that makes sense to me. Uh, so, we've kind of gotten to see the twisted cathedral ward with just different bits of, of edifices and geometry slammed into each other and upended and upheaved. Uh, and now, we'll still get a couple of repeat areas, albeit, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that view. That is like entering Majula for the first time level of vista. Fuck, man. Uh, we'll start to see things open up next time. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.